Well, hello. I am about to do a review of a pen that I no longer have. I was loaned a Omas Ugiva by Deborah, who is a viewer, and thank you, Deborah. Um, I really want one now, but I did have to mail it back to you, so by the time you are actually watching this, it is back. Normally, I film these reviews with a pen in hand so I can hold it up. I actually did do that with Deborah's pen in hand, and uh, mailed it back. And, you know, I, I filmed these reviews a little bit ahead of time, and I deleted that file. Everything else here is with Deborah's pen, uh, but this part of the review, I no longer have Deborah's pen in hand. But, this is a pen that made a big impression on me. This is a pen I would actually like to own. So, I can remember it. So let's talk a little bit about the pen. Uh, Omas Ogiva, uh, in the news this winter, o Omas has closed its doors. Uh, the company no longer exists, so if you want an Omas Ogiva, you're going to have to either find remaining stock somewhere or else a used Omas pen. Uh, that said, what a wonderful nib. Deborah had a medium fine nib, which I really liked. She had a citron vodka finish, and it's a celluloid, which is a plastic made out of cotton, which I have heard described as feeling warm, but honestly, when I felt it, I didn't really feel anything different than regular plastic. Uh, it was the writing that made me like the pen so much. I mean, even looking at the mechanism, yeah, it was all faceted and pretty inside, like you'll see in the pictures, but uh, it wasn't, wasn't that special, really. It's the writing. Uh, one of the goofy things with the Omasu Giva, the threads for the cap were right in the middle of the, of the grip section. That's kind of weird. Uh, honestly, they didn't bother me much. They were not sharp, but that was just a weird place to put them. But whatever. Now, Omasu Giva, I discovered, is very hard to clean out because somehow ink gets behind the piston. But, since there was already ink behind the piston when Deborah mailed it to me, I'm not feeling too bad. It might have even been her ink, but I couldn't get it out. And I wasn't going to try and risk taking it apart the way I would, like a Lamy 2000 or something, where I know I can take it apart to clean it. So, yeah. But, as far as writing, wow. Uh, it's an extra flexible nib, and it really, really does spread. Uh, uh, drawing a blank there. Stephen Brown did a video in which he reviewed an Omasu Giva, and the first thing he did is spring the tines. You always have to be careful of that when you're working with a uh, flex nib. Uh, he had to fix it. I didn't spring mine, but then again, it I wasn't mine, so I wasn't really going to push it at all. In fact, if it was my net deck price point, I probably wouldn't push it either. But uh, I didn't have any trouble with that. It just laid down a nice line with some light, nice line variation. Very, very impressive. Uh, ebonite feed, which is supposed to be really cool in the fountain pen world. I haven't noticed in the writing experience that ebonite feeds make much difference. Uh, the place I've noticed the difference is if you want to heat set the nib. You can, you can heat set an ebonite feed, but you cannot heat set a plastic feed without quite a lot more chemistry involved. So that said, uh, what else could I talk about with the pen? Piston filler, I like that. Uh, definitely, it's a demonstrator, so you can see the mechanism work. I like that, actually. Although it makes it look a little bit cheaper, at the same time it is a nice-looking pen, so there is that. Um, would I buy it? I think I could be talked into it. I uh, that, that price point always makes me nervous. I uh, knew they were going for about $400 a piece, so I don't know that I will be buying one. And especially now that the company has gone out of business, that's pretty strong possibility I will not buy one at all. But even so, nice pen. Uh, not sure if it's worth $400, but the, whatever. The plastic is part of the reason it's so expensive. That celluloid, the whole process of making that out of cotton seed is uh, a long, arduous process. Uh, the nib is definitely part of it. The hand craftsmanship that Omas used to do, definitely part of the price point. The detailing on the pen, like you'll see around the cap band, there's this nice kind of Greek, I don't know what to call it, but a Greek design. Uh, just a very nice looking pen. So I am sad to see that that company has gone. But uh, at the same time, I look at that company and I looked at their product line and there's not a lot there I would buy and 
there's nothing there for an entry level. I mean, even if I had money, there's not a lot there I would buy. And even if, uh, and for those who don't have money, I wouldn't have considered an Omos pen anyway because they were all so expensive. So, you know, nice pen. Thank you, Deborah, for letting me try it. I love that medium nib, the extra flexible. Uh, if I see one at the right price, I would probably buy it. I have some money set aside for something like that. So maybe down the road I'll own an Omas Ogiva. Wouldn't mind it. Now as far as size, usually I hold it up comparing it to a Noodler's pen. Uh, we have photographs, which I didn't open on my computer and I'm not going to be weird and start looking at that. So we'll just go by memory, but it is a long pen. Posted, I remember it was like at least an inch longer than the Noodler's, but anyway, uncapped, they were close. I think the Omas was a little bit bigger when they were capped, but like I said, posted, I did not post that Omas. It was not even comfortable posted. It was just too long. Yeah, interesting pen. Thank you, Deborah, for letting me try it. We'll turn now to our writing sample, which is Deborah's pen in action. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. So I need to thank Deborah again for this loan of this wonderful pen. Uh, Omas will give a cocktail. Stipula, I'm using Stipula Saffron Ink. It is an amazing writer. It writes very smoothly. It has flex. And, you know, it's an extra flexible nib. I didn't want to write all that, so I wrote EF, and then I thought, wait a second, it's going to say extra fine medium. So this means extra flexible, and it is medium. Uh, and it really does have flex. It's a very wet writer. In fact, this ink just kind of pools on the paper before drying. Um, I had... Uh, what was it? The Noodler's Apache Sunset in here before. That worked beautifully, too. Uh, my only problem with that ink is it does take forever to dry. I mean, just look at that. Uh, that didn't work as well as I envisioned, but whatever. Uh, beautiful flex. You get good shading, you get good line variation. I just can't get enough of this nib. In fact, all right, so as far as a quote, So this is not my pen, which is why I didn't want to push it as much as you may see with some other reviewers, but that's okay. I uh, still think this demonstrated very good line variation. Uh, it is sad that since uh, between the time I was offered this pen for review and the time it actually came here, Omas announced that it's closing its doors. So this, this pen is no longer available. So Deborah, I thank you for this loaner. I will get it back to you. Uh, much as you sent it to me, wrapped in tissue paper and lots and lots of bubble wrap. And so I thank you again, and I hope this was useful, and we'll see you all later.